Welcome to Mrs. V's Reading Corner, where you can enjoy books for educational, fun, or even bedtime stories. Please take the time to like this video, comment below with how you enjoyed it, book suggestions, and more. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get all the new books that I post first. Red, White, and Blue, The Story of the American Flag by John Herman, illustrated by Shannon Sturwis. What traditions and celebrations involve our country's flag? We all know the American flag. Its bright colors fly at baseball games. It flies at 4th of July parades. We even see it on clothes. Our flag has lots of nicknames like Old Glory and the Red, White, and Blue. Sometimes it's called the Stars and Stripes. But where did our flag come from? Who decided what it will look like? The truth is that no one knows for sure. Back in 1700s, America didn't have a flag. It didn't need one. It wasn't even a country yet. It was just 13 colonies. The colonies belonged to England. The English flag flew in towns from New Hampshire to Georgia. But as time went on, the 13 colonies didn't want to belong to England anymore. Americans decided to fight for their freedom. A war began. It was the American Revolution. Now a new flag was needed, an American flag. Who made our first flag? Some people say it was a woman named Betsy Ross. Maybe we've heard of her. Betsy Ross owned a sewing shop in Philadelphia. She was famous for her sewing. The story is that one day a general came to see her. The general was George Washington. He was the head of the American army. George Washington wanted a new flag. It would make his soldiers feel like a real army fighting for a real country. He wanted Betsy Ross to make this flag. He drew a picture of what he wanted. Betsy Ross made some changes. Then she showed the pictures to General Washington. He liked it. Betsy Ross sold the flag, and that was the very first Stars and Stripes. That is the story, and it's a good one. But is it true? Betsy Ross's grandson said it was. He said that Betsy told him the story when he was a little boy and she was a old woman of 84. But there is no proof for this story. So what do we know for sure? We know that during the revolution, the colonists used lots of different flags. But once the colonists became the United States of America, the country needed one flag, the same flag for everybody. So on June 14th, 1777, a decision was made. The flag was going to have 13 red and white stripes. The flag was also going to have 13 white stars on a blue background, one for each of the 13 colonists. Now the United States had a flag. Congress had picked the colors and the stars and stripes but Congress did not say where the stars and stripes had to go. So the flag still did not always look the same. People could put them any way they liked. Sometimes the stripes were up and down like this. Sometimes the stars were in a circle like this, but nobody minded. Up and down or side to side, the stars and stripes still stood for the United States. Over the years, the flag became more and more important to people. In 1812, the United States was at war with England again. British soldiers came to America. 
They sailed up our rivers. They marched down our streets. They even burned down the White House, the home of the president. On the night of September 13, 1814, British soldiers bombed a fort in Maryland. All that night, a man watched the fighting. His name was Francis Scott Key. He was afraid. What if the American soldiers in the fort gave up? But in the early morning light, he saw the stars and stripes. It was still flying above the fort. He knew American soldiers had won the battle. Key felt very proud. He wrote a poem about the flag on the fort. The poem was The Star Spangled Banner. Later, the poem was put to music. This song about our flag became a song for our whole country. The flag that Francis Scott Key saw had 15 stripes and 15 stars. Why? Because by then there were two more states, Vermont and Kentucky. Our country was getting bigger. People were heading out west. In time, more places were going to want to be states. Soon, there would be too many stripes to fit on a flag. Congress had to do something. So in 1818, this is what was decided. The flag would go back to 13 red and white stripes and in the blue box would be one white star for each state. Every time there was a new state, a new star would be added. At last, the stars and stripes looked the same everywhere it flew, and Americans were proud of their flag. They took the flag with them as they moved west. The flag crossed the Mississippi River in the great grassy plains of the Rocky Mountains. It made it all the way to California. More and more states were added to the country and more and more stars were added to the flag. By 1837, there were 26 stars on the flag. By 1850, there were 31. One country, one flag, but then in 1861, something happened. Our country split in two. Eleven states in the South broke away from the United States. They started their own country. It was called the Confederate States of America. Abraham Lincoln was president of the United States. He said all the states had to stay together. War broke out. The Civil War. It was a very sad time in the history of our country. The 11 southern states stopped flying the stars and stripes. They had their own flag. In the north, some people wanted 11 stars taken off the stars and stripes. But Abraham Lincoln would not do that. He said the states would get back together. He was right. The Civil War ended in 1865. The north won. And the United States was one country under one flag again. On June 14, 1877, the flag had a birthday, a big one. It was a hundred years old. All across the country, people had picnics and parties and parades. June 14th became a holiday, Flag Day. Today, our flag has 50 stars for the 50 United States of America. Some flags are huge. One weighs 500 pounds. It is flown every 4th of July from the George Washington Bridge. The American flag flies in towns and cities from coast to coast. And that's not all. In 1969, Two American astronauts were the first people ever to land on the moon. The astronauts took lots of moon rocks back to Earth. They also left something on the moon, the stars and stripes. And do you know what? 
our flag is still flying there. The end.